11 seasons and 139 races are in the books for the 2K World Cup presented by DES Simulation as we welcome you to season number 12 and a return to the Canadian Tires Motorsports Park. The 10 corner racetrack with the sweeps, the bend, a little bit of undulation and of course those ever so slippy runoffs that basically will create a fantastic season opener for season number 12 of the 2k world cup qualifying is just getting itself underway rules are exactly the same as they always have been two laps go as fast as you can and don't get yourself an off track otherwise things might get a little bit more difficult for you track temp is or air temp even is 72 degrees fahrenheit with humidity at 51 percent clear skies here this evening and nine mile an hour winds as we're going to be racing for 36 laps or 142 kilometers here this evening wolverton along with jake sparry before we go any further shout out Istvan bala trackcam22.com andres warner and one design simon grossman at and nick Fisson for race what tv live timing and scoring well jake time to kick off race 140 in the 2K World Cup. And this is the most stacked field I have ever seen, Will, and this is not an understatement. Let's just talk some of the teams that are here today. You've got the likes of Teo Martin Esports, Evolution Racing Team, the kings of Skip Barber's TT Racing. You talk about GT Ross here today, Thrustmaster Mavano, Positive Sim Racing, Teo Martin Esports, I've said already, but there is a bigger name than all of those who's joining into the mix. Coming from the esports world, the likes of League of Legends and co, Giants Gaming are here, and this is the similar sort of impact into sim racing, the same way in Spanish sim racing as say FA Racing G2 have. Yeah, indeed. So Fahim Atanides is out on track right now. Let's go and have a look at some drivers as they are on track. On board with Fahim Atanides, number 113 machine, as he is on a lap right now. Um, looking at lap times, about 135, etc. here on track, number 130 machine. Just working himself then down towards turn number. I believe he's going into turn number two, turn number three. Actually, no, just a little bit further than that. As you see, slowing himself right down now for this double apex right hand of Moss Corner, turn number five, turn number six. And well, Jay, overtaking opportunities, there are many of them on this track. Turn number one through four, less so. But as soon as you go into five, you can pretty much go three wide the entire rest of the way around. Well, it's so difficult to go three wide. This long Mario Andretti straight is always going to be the one where you set up the move into eight, but you can hold it two wide through nine. You can then get it through into 10 as well. There is always that opportunity to go too wide at most sport. One of those circuits which has a really good high top speed, which means momentum is going to be so vital. Not just for this opening lap in qualifying, we should expect the second laps in qualifying to go even quicker than that. The first times are looking to come down onto the board then. Andrea Iman should should have been the first one to cross the line as now we're starting to see them come in. Ade Koba Lopez though for Giants Gaming gets himself up to with a 131.1. Vodafone Giants Gaming in top and it's then Evolution Racing Team and now Philippe Lebert up into second. Yeah, I always say one thing. I'm probably one of those people that looks at Giants Gaming and think, you know what? Same drivers repackaged on the different team name. Same way FAG2 Racing was. Yeah, more people coming in. In terms of an esports side of things, that is great. But in terms of the drivers in the series, many of them are pretty much the same as they have been, just in slightly new shiny colours to kick off a new season. Let's go and have a look at TT Racing and Diego Francisco, number 48 machine. Into Moss Corner he comes, as it is now Andrew Picorio up into third place. Adi Copa Lopez, Philippe Leiber, Picorio, Lopez Jr., Mallow, Tipton, Fraser, Francisco, who are on board with, Sergio Hidalgo and Enzo Cantor running out your top 10. It's a big field in terms of numbers as well. Over 50 drivers here today at Moss, or at Canadian Tires Motorsport Park. I get slapped around the wrist every time I call it Moss Sport. Um, so the Canadian Tires Motorsports Park, big grid. We always see a big grid here, Jake. Um, but of course, 
risk of a caution on the first couple of laps is a big one. Well, it's massive. Of course, there's no runoff area. Herman Tilke did not design this track, and he never, ever will get the chance to. There is no space for runoff. You've got to make sure you're correct, because the moment that a high-speed accident happens around here, it's so easy that 10, 20 vehicles get involved. Iron De Freighter moves up into fourth position. Johnny Gindy moves then up into fourth position on a 131 flat. Ade Cobra goes even quicker. Vinny Rocha back to the darts. Philippe Lebert moves up into pole position. Keep your eyes out. The reigning Champion still yet to do his second lap. Brian Lockwood, he's down in 39. Yep, so not a good start of the day then for Brian Lockwood. Uh, well, I mean, that's the thing. This track, you often have drivers so close together as well. And if you mess up the first lap, you are going to struggle all the way through. Um, having a look through the field of drivers who haven't qualified. Some big names in that one as well. Richard Avery, for example, hasn't set a qualifying time here today. Tran Tran hasn't set a qualifying time here today. So a couple of big drivers there. Still got a lot of work to do, but let's go and pay our attention over to Brian Lockwood in that number 41 machine. Heading himself then down into the S's. Turn number eight, turn number nine, and turn number 10 on track is White's corner. But now, bringing it through to the left, you've really got to set the car up well here to get yourself the good run that you need into White's corner. That will be important at the end of this event. Final corner. Brian Lockwood was 43rd, and he's now going to move himself up to 32nd. Big improvement. Two tenths of a second, 10 places. That's just how difficult it can be. And just looking at drivers who haven't set lap times, Tuan Tran and Roberto Diaz need set times. It's so crucial, Will, because only the top 55 starts, and we've got 57 trying to qualify. So the two worst drivers, currently drivers who haven't set times, Frank Castillo, Davide Regini, and the likes of Edwin Viarino as well, are all there. John Morgan and Hans Hoyer would be classed as on the bubble here's Roberto Diaz though over the line for his first lap he does a 131.9 that moves him up into 41st position Tuan Tran in comparison moves himself up into 25th position Will which now puts Hans Hoyer firmly on the bubble with Viarino on a lap yeah and Edwin Valerino of course he's a driver who we have seen so often here in the 2k World Cup we turn our attention over to him he will complete this lap I was just double checking there his best lap time today, um, well, he hasn't set one. His last lap was an outlap, a 5 minute 39 second outlap officially. So he did have an incident on his outlap run towards lap even, we should say. Across the start finish line, 24th. He's into the event into the event which pushes Hans Hoyer out and Hans Hoyer does not have a lap so it's all on Davide Regini if he will set a lap time but I don't think he will so I think that's going to be that in terms of where everybody stands at the bottom but now it's a case of who can improve Frank Castillo for example has done a 32.5 uh, 32.3 sorry 3.59 so he's down in 54th the last place you want to be is starting on the Mario Andretti straight hoping for something to happen because as we all know Will positions can be difficult to gain, especially when you look at the top 20, and when you've got Justin Tipton 20th and Enzo Cantor 21st, you know this field's stacked. Yeah, indeed so. So heading himself then through the S's, turn number 8, turn number 9, turn number 10 for Frank Castillo right now in P number 54. Only real driver, just having a look, only real driver, in fact the only driver on track is trying to try and move up into 13th place. The so better for him, Castillo passed the line, 49th place in the field and safe. We have got Greg Zeeps on track. He is on a lap right now and he should complete this one on time. So let's go and pay our attention over to Greg Zeeps' his best lap. Out of laps. Yeah, he is out of laps. I was going to say his best lap was actually set last time by 131.438. So he has done his two laps, just towing around, getting some extra bit of information before this event here today. We're going to step aside for 30 seconds, ladies and gentlemen, back with the grid after this.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Canadian Tires Motorsports Park. Ground number one of the 12th season of the 2K World Cup here on Racebot TV and on iRacing Live. Qualifying, the timer ticks itself all the way down to zero and we'll get ourselves ready then to run through your starting grid for this race number 140 of the 2K World Cup presented by DES Simulation. Let's get that grid up for you then. And it'll be Philippe Leiberg qualifying time, 1 minute 30.945 at the very front of the field, Ale Copa Lopez, alongside him 27 one thousandths of a second back. Vinicius Rocha in third place, with Diego Francisco in fourth, then Johnny Gindy in B number five, Bill Fraser in sixth, Jordi Lopez Jr. in seventh, Aaron Fraser in eighth, Alfredo Malo in ninth, and Edwin Valerino rounding out your top 10 is Jake Longford. I'm not going to roll off 57 names. Well, two drivers that didn't qualify, but they're going to come through on your screen. The run to turn number five is going to be chaotic. It will, Will. And you, you look at the fact that turn five is a bottleneck corner as well. It's an off-camber double apex right-hander. Some drivers who look to be greedy and attack that section, they could easily run into issues. But right now, I think this is going to be a strategy game. You've got to hope that the field breaks and splinters up for you. I can easily expect to see a front eight train breakaway. And I think somewhere around Mallow, maybe via Reno, Precario, you've got to be so careful here. Draft and momentum, so vital at most sports. And I think that a lot of drivers need to be so, so careful in the early goings. Yeah, it will be a long, Long, long race for some of these drivers. 36 laps. So we are doing one of these races, Jake, that will have two pit stops here today. We're actually having a look at the rear part of the field. You can see a lot of drivers starting actually in the S's. Well, a lot of drivers starting in the S's is always going to be a big issue, Will, because that means that they are going to have to go side by side for three corners before they even see the green lights. So that's going to mean that they've got to really rely on instinct to move through in the early goings. But here's a look at the front of your field then as we get ourselves ready for the first round of a new season. There'll be jitters, there'll be nerves, but Philippe Burr starting at the front of the field for TT Racing. Lights are on, on top of the gantry. Let's get a new season underway. A 2K World Cup starts right now as always a bit of a slower start compared to what you see in some of the higher powered formula cars but coming down in towards one for the first time will come your field they get themselves single file then for the first handful of rows they work themselves through one but turn number two is often the trouble corner first 20 drivers all through okay now into that second corner we got a bit of trouble already one car and is he gonna try and stay off track jake i think he's just about gonna hold it Alfredo Mallo for the Teo Martin eSports team running into issues as now there's more dramas in the middle of the pack at turn three. We'll have to try and get around. I'm not sure. Track blocked and the caution comes out there around Kartik Pie getting involved. I think Matt Defoe was there as well. Yeah, we'll get ourselves a look at that one at the, in a moment's time. One thing worth noting is that we had a lot of drivers involved then. So drivers are now going to try their hardest to get back towards pit road with what might be some pretty damaged race cars. But, as we say, Carthic Pie there in the mix. Let's have a look on board of him. Down in towards turn number three. You already see the track getting semi-blocked as Carthic Pie comes through, and there's nowhere for pretty much about 10 drivers to go, Jake. Well, they were, they were all having troubles at Quebec Corner, and a Girls Aloud song was I Don't Speak French, but I think a lot of drivers in the end will be using French expletives or something otherwise, because when you get involved in an incident, uh, incident in the middle of the track, the first thing you're told to do is hold your brakes, Will. And even if you hold your brakes, there is no guarantee that another driver is going to see you. And the moment that you start seeing five, six, seven drivers all starting to check up and make contact here and there, it's almost impossible to avoid. This is what we feared at the start of this event, 
It's a caution, but crucially, it means that fuel is going to be a little bit easier here today as now drivers may be starting to feign the idea of coming down in, maybe getting uh, repairs done in the early goings. Yeah, I would say no one inside of your top 20 drivers should come in and try and top off and fuel. It's a 36 lap race here. And actually, let's try and ride on board of Philippe Lebert. Is he lifting and coasting yet? Oh, yes, he is. Well, of course you would, Will. You need to save that fuel, and you need to save that fuel quickly, especially at such a high fuel consumption circuit like most sports is, when you're on the throttle for maybe 70% of the lap, maybe even a little bit less. You're looking here at a track where fuel saving becomes massive. Being in the draft is massive. Being the head of the train, very similar to a track, say, like Phillip Island, you need to be at the second or third man in that train so you can make that move on the final lap, and you can save enough fuel to get to the end. Or, on a two-race situation like this, you play the numbers and you just go for it. And Philippe Le Burr right now might be thinking that one. Uh, of course, it is a rolling restart here. If he can get himself out to a second, second point two in the first lap or so, you might see him just try and run seven, eight qualifying laps in a row to try and break the field and hope that it never gets to that point of having to be second or third in line at the end. Yes, but you have to remember that the draft is powerful from over a second back wheel here at most sport. It means that you can gain about half a second on this back stretch if you get a good run out of Moss Corner. So you really need a little bit of help from vehicles fighting behind. Imagine it like a cycling race and all of a sudden you get, say, um, you know, Chris Froome's team decides he wants to push the margin, but then another team wants to try and disrupt that team. You may get one or two drivers break away, Will, but the issue is going to be then the rest of the pack is stripping over each other. Did he say... Um, um break the margin or break open the drugs cabinet uh neither as we've got ourselves then drivers on pit road or out of the event matt defoe sergio uh, number 316 car richard avery iron de freighter alfredo mello adrian yunez and david Regini and hans Hoyer there but we've got a number of drivers who have made pit stops as well john sully simon edwards l leroy coppage Fabio Monterey and Martin Cruz have all made themselves a pit stop. Now, these lights should go out on top of the pace car this time by. Indeed, that is the case. The lights are out on the pace car. We're back to green flag racing then. After basically um, about a lap and a, well, two, a lap and two thirds stuck behind the pace car, Jake, because, of course, they do have to pretty much go at full tilt to get to the pace car. Yeah, they do. And while well, I'm just looking at these drivers coming out of pit road, of course, the red light was on at the end of pit road because the pace car was passing. I've just seen Arian De Freitas lose three positions, Will, three careless positions by just not realizing that pit lane was open. And that is positions to Daniel Muth. That is a position to Sergio Hidalgo and Adrian Jimenez. So certainly a lot of time that can be lost. But those are three positions he now has to make on track, Will. And I think s small things like that, which you don't normally practice for, have to remember that a safety car doesn't happen in an official race say that iRacing provides you look at this and you go well it's something that you need to learn for next time yeah indeed so so three of 36 laps will be scored complete it will still be at least two stops to the flag for everyone here today tires aren't the issue the fuel most definitely is as we see the cars then head themselves through moss corner and then down the long, long, long Mario Andretti straightaway. Let's have a look at some of the cars as they work themselves on the exit of Moss Corner. Lots of fantastic new liveries. A couple of broken front ends already on these cars. A couple of battered rear wings as well. But that is a look at the field as they all kind of work themselves then down the Mario Andretti straightaway. And it is a straightaway here, not a straight. Because, of course, we are in North America. And then down towards the S's. Get this show back on the road. And look at how close Philippe Labour is to the rear of the pace car. And Adicopa Lopez would do well right now to close up as much as he can. There's not much wiggle room after that. Pace car comes on towards pit road. We will go back to green flag racing pretty quickly. And as Shake mentioned a moment ago, this is a track. Well, this is a series when people aren't used the restarts all that often. Pace car on pit road, picking up the pace then. Green flag in the air we go again. And Philippe Le Burr bringing the field. It's a two car breakaway because Vinicius Rocha was caught napping there. Diego Francisco in fourth place, almost overtaking Vinicius Rocha in towards turn number one. Can't do anything about that one, however. 
behind. Let's see if they can all make it through, Jake. Well, caught napping's one thing. The other thing is maybe team strategy. Of course, three of the Team TT Racing inside of the top four as Bill Fraser had an alternative line to go through Clayton's corner, turn number two. Into Quebec, which was the trouble corner of three, and Viarino is not close enough to go and make that move. Side by side, further back in the pack, though, as Carl Dronke makes the move on Andrea Eyman and Justin Tipton now waiting just in front. Now Borja Zazo wants in on the mix. Yeah, we've got ourselves pretty much clean then this time around. Live timing and scoring will be available in about a minute's time, ladies and gentlemen, once you get ourselves a clean lap in. However, Le Bird does lead. The gap between himself and Anacopa Lopez is two tenths per second, but this is where the draft really comes into play. You won't see a lot of drivers necessarily go for it early in your front duo. They'll start saving fuel as quickly as they can. Anacopa Lopez going to the point and on board of Vinicius Rocha. Gap between himself and Philippe Le Bird at the end of the straightaway. Only six tenths of a second, so not really closing it up too quickly. A couple of drivers, of course, love setting themselves fast as laps, etc., etc., in this event. And of course, you can get social of us links on your screen in a moment's time as well. But one lap completed under green here on board right now, Jay, with Jordi Lopez Jr. versus Johnny Gindy. Well, Jordi and Johnny are both part of the same team. Evolution Racing Team, they'll need to work together to move up to try and challenge the likes of Vodafone Giants and TT Racing, who are controlling the front four positions here of this race. But the draft already proving vital here for Vinny Rocha, who will go through. Keep an eye on Vinny Rocha. He likes to go short on the fuel wheel, and we've seen a number of times so far in his career how he has run out before the end. Also, keep an eye on Brian Lockwood right now. He is plus 16 so far in the space of five laps and he's looking to battle it out with Hidalgo and Iman. Yeah, as we look on board of Lockwoods, they are side by side ahead of him, Jamie Mercida and Andrea Iman as they work themselves towards Moscuana. First of all, they got that really hard, really difficult left-hand kink and you see Lockwood looking left, looking right, looking for a lane, gets one in towards turn number five, looking for another one, probably on the exit of the Mario Andretti straight away. So Lockwood now up into 19th place in track. Talk about Vinny Rocha as well. He's probably one of these drivers that's very happy over the fact that we have had ourselves a caution here to help his fuel number out as we lay Burr back to the top of the timing sheet. Copa Lopez down into second. Rocha holds station in third. Yep, Rocha holding station then in third position. Diogo Francisco fourth. Gindy getting a big slide. Mr. Two Shoes himself gets a little bit sideways and manages to hold it together. You can get away with it here today. Well, track conditions are a little bit colder. We're in morning conditions, so maybe the vehicle a little bit more tuned to oversteer than it would be towards understeer, which would be a nightmare at this circuit. We'd be seeing more vehicles off in a fashion of just running off the road. But for now, it is certainly a breakaway of six. Bill Fraser's been trying to stay along, but Bill Fraser has been running off a couple of times, and he gets a big sideways moment heading through Clayton's corner. Code Brown. Yep, so that is another one for him then, as we got behind. Um, most drivers are now kind of just circulating on track. Trying, try, by the way, the driver who pitted, he's worked himself up into P number 27. Um, looking for 26th place right now over Michael Dallavelle, as he's not able to do that one just yet but a couple of Lopez is in the field here today Victor Lobato Lopez looking on board of him in the number 318 Vodafone machine exiting Moss Corner now towards Mario Andretti straight away they will go again as further up Jordi Lopez Jr what is with all the Lopez's here today well, it seems that Club Iberia and Club Spain have gone to the mix as Ade Koba goes to the front of the field and makes sure he gets himself past Philippe Lebert. For Jordi Lopez Jr., he knows what he needs to do. And also keep that eye on Victor Labato there in the Teo Martins 318 because he's trying desperately to stay with Edwin Viarino and Andrew Picario because that could make it a very, very juicy 10-car train at the front. Right now, it's a train of seven. Yeah, it is, although the gap between P number 8 and P number 7 right now is only 8 tenths per second on board of Andrew Pecorio, uh, as we'll have a look at the lap time to see how things are going there. Did lose two tenths at last time by, so the number 53 machine needs a bit of help from Adrian Valerino behind here, not to fight him too hard in the first section of this racetrack to give themselves the opportunity to come back into this. But there are some... And this is a weird thing to say to it. There are some people that know they are top 15 runners, not necessarily top five runners, that don't want to be in this lead pack. 
Well, I know that they don't because they want to pick up those positions late. Brian Duell comes very, very heavily into mind as someone who makes positions late in events the same way that a Marty Piatella would in the iRacing World Championship Grand Prix Series as the positive sim racing driver. Currently sits in his second pack in 12th position. Stephen Storrs in front as well as the rest of the train. But you're starting to see here how drivers don't want to be leading this race. This is going to slow down the overall pace of this event. It's going to bring more vehicles into the lead pack. And when more vehicles come into that lead pack, will carnage is most likely to ensue. Yeah, Labour takes the race lead again. Coba Lopez in second place. But look at this one. Power moving. He's just roach up. Number 91 car. Slide job. It's TT Racing 1-2. It is, and they're trying to make it one, two, three, but they don't quite have it right now with Diogo Francisco trying to find every angle to get past the Vodafone Giants racing machine that is there of Adekova, but Diogo Francisco will have to wait and will have to try and look. Currently, the only team available at the moment in this field that can put themselves in the fabled lock, a one, two, three on the podium. We've seen it a few times from Koanda over the years, but a TT lock for the opening round. Does that say intentions met, Will? Maybe, maybe so. And of course, TT Racing, they really have made this 2K World Cup their proving ground, their hunting ground. As Bill Fraser versus Edwin Valerino gap up to 1.5 seconds. So all that working together I talked about a moment ago, Jim, not happening. Valerino and Pecorio lost themselves seven tenths to a second last lap. Well, that's massive here, and I think that the racecraft engineering machine of Andrew Picario, who has just gone into that brand new team, needs to find a way to bridge the gap, either hoping that that front pack slows down or that they start speeding up and trading positions and not being selfish with their own fuel. Sometimes you need to give a little to get the chance. Here's Bill Fraser, though. He wants to start moving up the pack, challenging Evolution Racing Team's Jordi Lopez Jr., but Vinny wants to go to the front against Philippe Lebert, and this is going going to be a very telling battle as we are almost Noah's Ark. We are Noah's Ark. Too wide, too deep. And now it's 1-2-3 TT. Yep, so there we are. You can see the little bit of wiggle from Philippe Lebert. That's going to allow the giant 301 machine to just get alongside into the final corner. But that's now going to be 48 machine Diego Francisco playing battle with the 301 car of Ani Copa Lopez. We've got an incident. We've got Edwin Valerino off and it looks like he is on to pit road. So actually, no, he's just on towards pit road very early, Jake. Lap eight, start of lap nine. So looking to go for an aggressive two stop then. Get the short stop out early. Get himself in some fresh air wheel out and away and time trial the laps. That could be a really good factor for him moving forward. The only difference is he's got to hope that he's got clean air coming out on track. Yeah, and also Brian Lockwood is another driver doing exactly the same thing. I was wondering where he was. But he came in at the end of lap number seven onto lap number eight. Has pitted. He's got a clean track ahead of him. For Lockwood, this one can work out well for him. Because he's probably so much faster than a lot of drivers around him. Well, he needs to make sure that he gets his title defense working the way that he wants to, Will. It was an abysmal qualifying. He did so well to gain up those positions, avoid the landmines in that opening lap wreck. That's got him into a better position here today to go and attack this race. But for now, he needs a little bit of help. He needs maybe a few drivers running into a few misdemeanors, and that can sometimes be a lot more easier than people oh, think. Trouble. So oh, dear. Yeah, and for him at tonight, as just ran into the rear of Steven Stoyles and then also Brian Dewell just had a horrific incident down on the Marion Dreddy straightaway replay coming up now. This was a big, big one and Atonide as well. It's pretty much all on him in my opinion. Oh, that was a sickening accident there. You don't like seeing it. You should never have yourself too wide. So, so similar, Will, to the incident a few seasons ago between Philippe Lebert and Tom Ward. There is no bump drafting in this series for that reason only. And Jordi Lopez Jr. is out. He is. Technical issues for Jordi Lopez Jr. by the looks of it. Early on, he fell down our time scores there, Jay. And I was thinking it might come back, but he's out due to technical difficulties. He is, and, you know, it's like the engine blowing up, except the engine can blow up in these sorts of vehicles. You don't want to see a technical issue like that for Jordi Lopez Jr. Unfortunately, that's the end of his race. That's one of his three drop weeks used in the series as Diogo Francisco gets close. Bill Fraser gets a piece of Johnny Gindy as well. 
Jürgen Francisco almost took the rear away from Ade Koba. That could have ended in disaster in this front pack. And it, all it's doing, it's allowing Victor Lobato for He-Man Tonidas, who was involved in that incident a lap ago, and Andrew Picario in the Racecraft Engineering Machine, all to close up. And there is no worry on tyres, Will, when it comes to that stop, because we proved in a 12-hour race, you only need one set of tyres in these skip barbers. Yeah, indeed. So one thing that's worth noting as well here, as they almost go free wide in towards Yasser's but for him, Atenaides right now, he now needs a top five because by my watch, that's going to be a pit lane start for the next race for him. Oh, I certainly think it will. And we know that the stewards are very quick with their decisions as Koba loses two positions. Gindy now tries to steal one away from Francisco. Up and under. The two for one special was on at the supermarket. And you know what? Gindy had a coupon. Yeah, as behind, you've got yourself Jonathan. Um, Drew Shaker then in the number 110 machine. There's a barbecue on pit road to order your brat whenever you get yourself the opportunity to do so. Yeah, we might not be in Wisconsin like the guys in the Verizon IndyCar series were, but we've heard the brats are good up here anyway. Um, John Gindy, Diego Francisco, Bill Fraser, Adakopa Lopez, they're all in that battle. Um, having a look down, it really is now helping Bacoria because the last couple of laps, he has gained, he gained nine tenths that previous lap, Jake. Oh, well, that just tells you all you need to know. He did a 130.7. Look at the leader. Did a 131.3, 131.4. That's everything you need to know. Now you've got Pecorio on the back of the train. And now Victor Lobato wants to get on the train. Fahim Antonides wants to get on the train as well. As Brian Wells come down in onto pit road, he is now officially one lap down but you're starting to see how the trade-offs happen how drivers want to get themselves into position someone like johnny gindy for example wants to move to the front of the field a clear lane to come down to pit road as we're almost three wide and two wide behind we'll go into turn number eight they come along as again the blue wheels of vinnie rocha prove brazil can move to the front of the pack lay bear is there in second and now francisco thinking about the inside and looking for position number three at white's corner and gets it it is now a tt lock but they're still too wide. Yeah, let's give you a lap here. Racebot TV fan immersion live from Canadian Tires and Racebot Park. Your top A. This is absolutely fantastic. You know what, Jake? This is that kind of calm before the storm moment. I expect a lot of drivers to start thinking about pit road from this time onwards. Of course, the two laps behind the safety car means that that window has extended out quite dramatically. Drivers can come in, in my opinion, about as late as lap number 16 and still kind of just about get it through on two stops here. So pit road will become very busy very quickly. You made the really good point in a couple of moments ago. People looking for a simple way in towards pit road. Because one thing about the Canadian Tires Motorsports Park, it's hard to get in and it's bunched up coming out. Oh, you bet it is. And it's right onto the racing line on pit exit as well. So you have to be up to speed incredibly quickly as well. So that's why you want some fresh air as your leading eight continue to go in. Bill, Fish, uh, Bill Fraser, though, having a fantastic run of things right now. We normally see him in the UK and I, Monday Night Skippies, which will be happening tomorrow night with Rachel Whiteford and co. And I think, Will, that Bill Fraser is showing some really nice form. And I'd like to see more of the Monday Night Skippy guys have that opportunity to go and race because it's proven right now they can race at the front of the 2k world cup which is the greatest field in skip barber sim racing and of course you can check out monday night skippies tomorrow night on racebot tv and on iRacing live Rewind. from 
9 p.m. UK time, that is 8 p.m. GMT, as we're having a look on board of Bill Fraser, catch Rachel Whiteford, Linus Bromstrand, and Conor Maddock when he's back with that one. But we have seen, we are seeing, look at that 109 car, Johnny Gindy almost being boxed out of the corner then as they head themselves to start another lap here. Lap number 14 of 36, that one got very dicey. But one thing that is worth noting, these guys know how to race wheel to wheel and for the most part not end up having incidents. One thing actually I was about to say for Bill Fraser was that you don't want to touch those white lines. Bill Fraser did just touch that white line and that very almost sent him off into the kitty list. And if you do that here at the Canadian Tires Motorsport Park, you will end up in the wall. Atanides now up into this leading train. He is fighting for seven. He is as he looks to try and get past Andrew Picario, who formerly said that white cars mattered. Right now, Racecraft Engineering says that his vehicle needs to get up to the front of the field and very, very quickly, as there's a big wiggle there from Diogo Francisco that could compromise his run. And the more that they fight in third position onwards, the more they allow Leibert and Rocha to break away. And Rocha is the most dangerous person when it comes to pit road. You can't afford to give him an inch. You can't afford to give him a mile as well, because he will go and push that envelope more more than anybody else. To the outside goes Philippe Leibert. To the outside goes Johnny Gindy. Let's know as Ark once more. And look at that. Team orders. Leibert to the front of the field as now still Gindy tries to get his way past Francisco. But he's got the outside for 10. But this inside for 9, which is not going to help. Yeah, as we have a look through. Here he comes. Yeah, yeah, we have got people then coming in already. And this is going to be Johnny Gindy on towards the lane. Thankfully for him, he has got himself a dance partner in Andrew Picorio. That might well prove to be useful for him. Oh, you bet it will. And that's going to mean that there's a drafting partner. There's contact between Francisco and Fraser. Francisco goes around and Koba gets a piece of it. Francisco in the wall and effectively out of this race. Replay coming up then. And this all starts on the run down in towards turn and one. There you can see the two cars coming in, by the way on the right hand side of your screen but now having a look by our aero coverage brought to you by and one design here official graphics partner race what tv here they are middle of your screen contact gonna be made once contact gonna be made twice veering across the track and you're right cobra lopez gets the pit of that one as well but the worst thing is you got yourself one driver and that is diego francisco who is on pit road and out and definitely out of this one. The good news for Ade Koba, though, despite the damage that he's got to the front of his machine, and he has got a crumpled front wing at that as well, is that there is one fast repair, a T-car, as it were, Will, that he can use, and he can get the damage repaired and get back out and going. The bad news is, any other damage will then look to be repaired manually by the crews that they have there. Side by side as Antonides now moves himself up into net third, but look at the gap that this has allowed lay bare, and Rose to come in and I think Gindy and Precario have just become kings late late call down onto the lane for Leibar. Yeah so Leibar then comes on towards pit road from what was your leading group he might be looking now to make maximum use of this situation comes in to make his first or two pit stops here today next pit stop will be around lap number 30 lap number 31 don't forget these drivers did save some fuel stuck behind the um, safety car a little bit earlier on Leap Labour, expect a 13 to 14 second pit stop around net about now. Actually shorter than that, 9.2, he's out and away. So quick stop there for Philippe Labour as ahead with top eight then for the time being. Vinny Rocha, Fahim Atanides, Bill Fraser, Adeko Lopez, Victor Lovato Lopez, Justin Tipton, JB Mesida, and Carl Dronke. But that's only part of the story because a lot of people have yet to pit here and we expect the lane to be hugely busy this time by to just let you know where Philippe Labour has come back out he's got a bit of traffic ahead of him in fact he's got five cars ahead of him right now trying try and Devon Singh Simon Edwards as well as the number 110 and the 311 cars so not the best time to come towards pit road potentially for him there Jake no, it wasn't, but he short-filled that stop, so he's put himself a mile in front of Gindy and Precario. Gindy in front of Precario. Let's not also forget there was that stop very early on for Brian Lockwood in this scenario, and Lockwood and Viarino, for example, have looked to make some good progress up through the field as the GT Ross machine of Javi Ross now under a bit of pressure, but Pit Road looks to be open. In is Rocha onto lane behind Steve Facciacci, but three stay out right now, and that's Koba, that's Fraser, and that's Lobato as well. 
Yeah, as we're just seeing ahead, Turan, Turan really trying to force the issue with some of these drivers. Here he is moving himself, trying to uh, cut through some of this traffic as one, two cars then come on towards pit road, three cars from that gaggle. Pit road is now a very, very busy place as there is Vinicius Rocha out and away. Pit stop time for him then will be 14.4 seconds. Johnny Gundy's already done his pit stop um, for Hiwat and Nida, so he is coming out of pit road in 15.7 seconds as he works himself back out onto track, merging, and he's actually got a piece of clean track behind, a little bit of clean track ahead as well. Um, just want to work out what Philippe Leibur is compared to all these other guys. He's 2.8 ahead of Vinicius Rocha, Johnny Gindy, etc. But he did short fill, Jake. He did short fill by a few seconds and he'll have to gain that back in his second stop. So we definitely know Lay Bear will be one of the first to come back in onto the lane. Rocha's got Gindy for company, which is not ideal. precario has been broken a little bit. And there you see Edwin Viarino, who is in the strategy game in the wheelhouse. But as I say that, Johnny Gindy runs very wide through the Moss corner. And that's going to put him under a little bit of pressure. Your leading three, though, should be down onto the lane this time by. And one decides to dive in. That's Bill Fraser. The other Others, though, they've been playing that fuel game. They're staying out. Victor, uh, Victor Lobato and Ade Koba, the two Lopezes, are staying out. Yeah, so here is Bill Fraser then making himself his first of two pit stops here today. You do still need to make it on two stops, but of course, the guys like Ade Koba and Victor Lobato Lopez, who are going to, as Bill Fraser overshoots them, that will cost them at least two tenths of a second, probably a little bit more. 141 machine going to make his pit stop, and that really is going to hurt him. A burst pass already. Tran Tran's passed already. Um, it's an even longer stop. 15.7 then out and away for Bill Fraser. Not the type of pit stop he needs. Um, these drivers who are going to pit later and later, of course, their second pit stop will be on the short side. Meanwhile, Matt Defoe, hello. We'll be nice to say hello to you. You had a three minute and 10 second pit stop. Not a good day for you in that positive sim racing car but you're currently in p number 43 we have got a uh, slow car coming um actually they're both cars on pit road even they are andreas robertson um, and roberto diaz we've also had devon singh um coming out and into a lot of traffic right now and that's the thing you re-merge onto the track jake it is very scary there's a gaggle of cars trying to merge on to the m6 um when it's pretty much rush hour but your entry lane's perfectly fine yes exactly will and as we see ade koba dive down onto lane lobato's had a horrible lap i think he's run off wide somewhere so he will definitely drop himself down the order as he looks to get himself on the lane everybody now has pitted as lay bear will look to re-inherit the race lead proper at this stage with Twan, uh, Tran and Defoe needing to come down on the lane sometime in the next few moments. In comes Twan Tran on cue. Uh, I, I think that also with a 90 second lap time and just how difficult this track can be, you need to make sure that you get yourself out and away very, very effectively as the waiting continues for those who are down on pit road. Cobra finally gets himself out of the way, but look at where he is. He's behind Viarino and he's also now behind Fahim Antonides as well. Yeah, so let's have a look. Oh, everyone now has made themselves a pit stop. So what we will do, not this lap, the next time around, we can run through your full list of results. Trance around them. Second pit stop for him today, of course, involved in incidents earlier on in this event. Out and away. Car right alongside him, right behind him, coming out of pit road. And this is that traffic jam we were talking about. But for Trance Trance, he's actually able to just about get and merge in before the next gaggle of cars will all try and come oh. through. Oh, it's a big incident in front of Rocha. It was a spinning oh, okay. uh, Fabio Unverdrus who was in a little bit of trouble. He just got a piece of the grass on the outside of Moss Corner, was spinning to the inside, and that was so dangerous for those two drivers, Will, because they had absolutely nowhere to go. Good news for Bear. That's more of an advantage when it comes to his next stop. Yeah, Carl Drunke lost it down in turn number three, and you can see just how hard it is to bring a car back onto track here at the Canadian Tires Motorsports Park. But, well, ahead, Johnny Gindy right now. Vinicius Rocha, if you are Gindy, um, you, you're gonna say, come on, I know we're on different teams here, but let's try and see who we can get up to Philippe Leibur. But I doubt it that Vinny's gonna wanna play ball right now. 
Well, as we all know, there is a brigade when it comes to TT racing, and they all work very, very hard for their leader, Philippe Lebert. So right now, if Vinny's got a chance of winning, we'll go for that win. They know, Will, that once it gets down to the bread and butter, they are allowed to fight for it. But anything before that, they're working for the team results. And that's where Rocha comes in. Because Rocha can hold Gindy up here. Give the gap to lay bare and push forward. The thing they can't afford to do, though, hold up too much. Because Precario did a 31-1 that last time by. Six tenths of a second quicker than Rocha, who had to check up for Umverdrus. Yeah, as we're just having a look down outside of your top 15. This is Daniel Murph trying to hunt down Devon Singh right now. Battle for 17th place on track, and that's going to be a car merging in then. Car Hello, scored Matt a lap Defoe. down. Yeah, it's Matt Defoe. Scored a lap down. Actually, um, Daniel Murph does pull um, quite wide down in turn number two as a consequence of that. Now into Quebec, turn number three. Um, back end, stepping out a little bit on that 307 machine. Let's run through then your top 10 as it stands after 20 laps when we score complete of this event this time by. And it is Philippe Lebert leading the way by 4.2 seconds right now over Johnny Gindy. But it's very close between Gindy and Vinicius Rocha. Third place is Rocha. Fourth place is Andrew Bacorio with Edwin Valerino in fifth place. Ahim Atanaides up into sixth. Brian Lockwood after miserable qualifying up into P number seven. So that one worked for him. Adacoba Lopez in eighth. Justin Tipton ninth. Enzo Cantor rounds out your top ten as Valerino. And Atanaides are in topping positions. In fact, no, Valerino's back on towards pit road for his second time here today, Jake. Yeah, he is. And, well, just look at Edwin Viarino. That second stop is in uh, a very difficult position for him as he looks to come in and make that work out. We're on lap 21 here, so he's got to go 15 laps on a tank of fuel. That's not impossible, but as we all know, he's got to work as hard as he can over this stint to make it work. Does he come out with traffic, though? There's three that go past him. There's six that goes past him. Seven that goes past him. The back of Matt Defoe. And there's a three-car gaggle as he looks to get out onto the pace. That's John Johnston Dekasher, Roberto Diaz, and Carl Dronke, and he's in the midst of all of it. In fact, he's behind all of it then, and Kartik Pai. Disaster stop then for that driver, Edwin Viarino, as he's now got to deal with the spinning Roberto Diaz in front of him. Yeah, as uh, is Diaz spinning. Let's get ourselves a replay of that one for you. On board then with Diaz. She's down into two. Just clips the curb, and that's going to... Not even the curb, just clips the grass there, Jake, and it's going to spin him around. As easy as that, it can happen. And for Edwin Viarino, he got lucky there. That could have so easily have ended his race. The way that that corner falls away from you at Clayton's turn number two, it's so easy for a vehicle to just roll off back into the middle of the circuit. Diaz did so well to keep that on the inside of the track. I will say Bill Fraser, who we did have an eye on, lost it coming out of pit road into turn number three. That's put him out of the event as well. But for now... This field keeps chopping and changing, chopping and changing. And the one drive we haven't talked about currently in ninth position overall at the moment, Will, is Enzo Cantor, started 23rd, having a fantastic drive. Yeah, but Brian Lockwood, after that miserable qualifying, is up now into P number six. I am going to now pull up that graphic and show you the movers and shakers in this event here today. And you've got to circle Brian Lockwood up 30 places. Up 14 for both Justin Tipton and Enzo Cantor. 22 for Borgia Zarzo, 18 for David Messina, and 14 for Simon Edwards here today. You notice that Daniel Murph's up 27 places. 31 up for Michael Danaville. 24 for Jonathan Drustrucker and in the number 110 car. 28 places for Francisco Valesquez and Monzom. Um, up 26 places for Andreas Robertson and John Morgan as well. Of course, a couple of big losers in your field here today. Brian Duell, one of them. Uh, of course, the biggest one is Arjen De Freita down 44 and Alfredo Mano down 45 positions. Okay, getting ourselves close now um, to the second round of pitch stop. It's going to be starting in about seven minutes' time. I'm going to take a quick break here on Racebot TV and on iRacing Live. We'll be back with more after this as we take you Racebot TV side by side.
And this is crucial because he needs to get out and he needs to get out in some clean air. And crucially, nobody following him down onto the lane. Still waiting, still waiting. A vehicle comes out in front of him. That's Steve Facciacci, who's looking to get going. And it's a long, long stop for Philippe Le Bear as he looks to get himself out and going. He's behind JB Mercida, but he's in a lot of clean air. So there's the good news. He can start working hard, but that was a very long stop, Will. It would be classic Lay Bear, but as we all know, Lay Bear's got to hemorrhage those four or five seconds to Gindy and Rocha. He now needs Rocha to fight hard against Johnny Gindy, and they've been trading positions every lap, every other lap there or thereabouts. As the leading two now side by side as they make their way to turn at number eight, and Rocha is given the position again by Johnny Gindy. Gindy, you had an atrocious season last season where he managed to fail to finish. I think it was his first or six of his first seven races, so that just shows you how bad Gindy was running last year but looking for that opportunity this time they need to work together and I think for Gindy he knows that Roche is not going to be too helpful Yeah, saving some gas is going to be very, very crucial for him. It means he's got more in the tank to attack later on. It could also mean that he can have less time on that lane to get to the magic number that he needs to get himself over the line with. But very crucially, a nice little three-car battle going on a little bit further down. Le Bears cleared it. It's Devin Singh, Simon Edwards, and Tuan Tran with Matt Defoe. Oh, hello again on the rear, just tagging along for the lols, apparently. But for now, Tuan Tran, Simon Edwards, Devin Singh, all of them have looked to have made a good number of positions apart from Tran, who is plus one. But they are all looking for that top 15. And of course, there is one race winner here in this pack of three. Well, pass. No, it won't, and that's just going to make life a little bit more difficult for people to understand where they are in terms of where do I stand. You need to make sure that you know exactly who you're fighting with and hoping that your strategy is better. Right now, for someone like Ade Koba, for example, in the 301 for the Vodafone Giants machine, he's got Justin Tipton back there, and that's going to be a little bit worrying because Justin Tipton has been really quiet all race long. We haven't seen too much of him as a candidate. Started 22nd all the way up to 6th. It is worth noting as well, we have seen Brian Lockwood come down onto the lane, and crucially, he is a full 10 seconds behind Philippe Lebert. That's just a uh, testament to his pace. He did 130.5 that last time by. You look at what Le Bear did, it was a 30.9. So actually, he gained a bit of time. But crucially, he's got a four-car train in front that he needs to try and break. And he's tagging along people with him. Kartik Pai, Edwin Viarino, who's on and made that second stop. So crucially enough for Brian Lockwood, he's ahead of Viarino. But right now, I'd put him right now scrapping it out with Cobra and with Tipton. Tipton on the lane.
Yeah, they need to stop. And, well, here comes the train of four that goes through Matt Defoe at the rear of it. Where is Lockwood? The answer is going straight by. Where's Viarino in all of this? Going straight by. So, all of a sudden now, I put Viarino in front of Tipton. And this is going to be touch and go between Viarino now and Koba. This is going to be interesting because Koba has actually let Brian Duell through, who is quicker out on track and his lap traffic. So, this is not really too helpful in some respects for Koba, but he's trying to use the traffic to his advantage advantage desperately. Yep, Kanta looking for his box and hits it perfectly. The Italian, who is so, so good. I say he has one of the best beards in sim racing. I say it all the time because he is mightily impressive as he gets himself now out and away. A good short stop there for Enzo Kanto under the Michelin footbridge. And now you can see where he comes out. The answer is behind Brian Lockwood. The answer will be behind a certain Mr. Edwin Viarino. And he will be out with Justin Tipton just behind. But he is just in the wheelhouse will. Does he need to get into play? But side by side for your race league. Gindy versus Rocha as now Javi Ross gets out of the way and he makes sure of it as well. So Rocha unable to make anything happen. Then Gindy makes the move, gets himself to the front and has a little bit of a gap to work with as well. And on cue, front of the pace, Gindy dives down to lane. Very aggressive, almost running into that little grass strip which nobody ever touches. Gindy is pushing. Got him. Yeah, he's done it for now, but of course there's one bit of lap traffic in the middle. Steve Facciacci, it's going to be a case of Gindy's got to get around now and stay within a second. If he stays within a second, Will, he's got a shot at victory. If he doesn't, there's trouble. Facciacci gets out of the way. Good driving there by Steve Facciacci, but now Leibert's got work to do. Now here's the next question. Does Rocha short fuel it? Oh, yeah, of course, but... Played out. Yep, and well, all four drivers uh, stay out. Five stay out. JB Master stays out as well. That one will be for position as well, which is not helpful for Leibert, who runs wide coming out of the final corner. You can get away with that, but not without an instant point, Will. And instant points become so, so pressured. Just drivers like Brian Lockwood on 14 out of 20 right now. If you hit 20, that's it. Your day's done. We've been very, very clean overall. This is a circuit that doesn't often uh, let up an instant point. But right now, you can't afford to get into an instant any time you hit another vehicle, that's four of them that get lopped off your bulk.
versus Mesida. Le Burr versus Mesida. Let's get that one right for the fourth time. Hi, everyone. I have been here the entire time. Jake's not been talking to himself. We do apologize. Lockwood. We're on board with him right now. As uh, so, um, Having a look at Vinicius Rocha at the same time. He's on towards Pit Road. Turning our attentions over to him, Jake. Yeah, Vinny Rocha on the lane. We'll see how short of a stop this is going to be. Macario follows. Antonides follows. Ade Koba stays out. Victor Lobato is yet to make his way onto the lane. And we are expecting Philippe Lebert to make his way onto the lane. He's got past JB Mercedes. He's put daylight between himself and Johnny Gindy. But remember, keep an eye on Rocha, who is right at the end of the pit road. And going, and going short. And Rocha is going to try and run for the border here. He's running for this one. And he's got the lead. But crucial. I don't think he's got the fuel. Well, he might have the fuel. Let's not forget that Labour only did um, a nine-second pit stop earlier on and is only going to be five laps to go at the end of this one. So, Vinny Rocha, he's doing it risky right now, but this isn't as risky as you think here, Jake. Well, no, he's had an opportunity to save fuel behind Johnny Gindy. So he's maybe got that number down to where he wants. But we know that Rocha likes to cut it so that he runs out of the uh, final corner. And he's not got any fuel at all to go and do another outlap. As Bear has a big moment and he loses the position to JB Mercida. Here's the opportunity for Gindy. They're starting to check up over each other, Will. And all of that was down to trying to get past Victor Lobato, but not getting it right. Yep, as Philippe Leibert, seven laps already in to a stint right now as he's going to have to get past um, JB and the number 233 three car is going to do that they're going to go three wide in towards the S's again well this is okay you can go three wide here so there's no need to shout and scream too much unless they make contact they're not going to do so they burr back up into third place but it will cost them a bit of time it cost them a second there over Vinny and all that will now do for Vinny as look at that actually on towards pit road there for the driver of Mercedes, so he's going to be okay at the end of all that one. But what it did do is it costed Labour 1.2 seconds, so Rocha can save a bit more now. Certainly can. He's got a bit more of a buffer, a margin right now. The only driver who has not come down and made a second stop yet is Ade Koba in the Vodafone Giants racing team. And right now for Ade Koba, he knows that he can't make it all the way to the line. He's got five laps to go in this event. Four and a half now as he makes his way to Moss. He's been saving fuel religiously all race long, but he will have to do a very, very quick splash and dash to finish this one. And for the moment, I think he's looking at Precario, maybe even Antonides if he's unlucky. Yeah, Johnny Gindy did touch a white line then in towards Quebec corner. Did unsettle the car a little bit, but gets a fantastic run off Moss corner. You can just see how close he is to Philippe Leibur. The gap between Rocha and Leibur, by the way, up to 3.3 seconds right now. So it looks as though that Rocha might end up winning this event because Gindy and Leibur are going to start tripping over each other. But it's more the fact that Lay Bear's making unforced errors again and again and again. And here comes Gindy to the outside. Looking for the opportunity. A little bit of a tire on the grass then as he looks to angle himself. Oh, that's beautiful. And now he cuts the nose off at the end as well to say thank you very much and come again. He moves himself up into second and he keeps himself in a very, very strong position at the moment. Lay Bear will look to come back at him. Try and work hard for Vinnie Rocher at the moment. That gap as they cross the line will it's going to be very telling with four to go the answer between them is still that 3.6 seconds but still staying out is Ade Koba yep so Koba Lopez will stay out one more time let's look at the lap gaps notice that it was two temps then that was um, lost by Gindy over Rocha last time by the graphics weren't perfect for Gindy and Latin 31 because of course pit stops there but Le Burr right now is going to have to work with Gindy because Victor Lobato Lopez is a silent man in the mix. And of course, he, along with Adicopa Lopez, they're not going to try and fuel save it to the end, are they? Well, they can be brave if they want to. I'm not sure they're going to make it to the end. It takes a brave man to one-stop this race. And we've been going for 51 minutes. Now looking at 52 minutes in this one. So you hope that they can hold on as Ade Koba has, crucially, a drafting partner. And that's Brian Doyle in the positive sim racing machine. Has been a stalwart of that team for a number of years. Lay bare to the outside, then, of Johnny Gindy. He'll make the move and comfortably before they make it to turn 
number eight. That's going to be vital, but Koba stays out with three remaining. Oh, my word. How late can you go? Starting to feel a bit like an Indy 500 here, Jake, in that he could come in on the white flag. He could just try and run out of fuel. Well, you can win it on a fuel save of all things. It's the most IndyCar way to win, as we all understand. But for now, it's a case of waiting because Ade Koba did a 31.5 that last time by. It was a 30.9 from Vinnie Rocha, who closed up by six tenths of a second. But the big thing is, it's a nine second gap to Rocha, who we think is short on fuel. Koba, who we definitely think is short on fuel, but may surprise us. And they got Lay Bear sitting 12 seconds back of your race leader right now, running quicker, four tenths of a second that last lap than Vinnie Rocha did. So. This is all starting to close up together here into a perfect concoction as we now have two and a half left. Yeah, I would say at this stage that Vinny's got enough fuel to make it to the end. Um, Philippe Le Burr, four steps faster, but that's more, I think, a bit of draft than anything else because Vinny Roche has been running it pretty much by himself for the last couple of laps. So we can see him. He's not got anyone to work with here. I say that as he just works himself past some lap traffic. Um, but with the, with the exception of that, Jake, he's not really had anyone to work with over the last couple of laps. No, he hasn't, and that's only going to be draining his fuel reserves more and more and more. In fact, he goes past Francisco Velasquez there, who is lap traffic, who had a moment a couple of laps ago, so gets past it. Koba stays out again. Popsicle sticks go in the air because there's two laps to go. Ade Koba's going to run the gauntlet here. Rocha, I don't think, can close him down in time. Leiber and Gindy right now, when we thought they would be fighting for the victory, they're fighting for a podium of all things, and Victor Lobato's in fifth. Yeah, Vinny Rocha gains two tenths of a second over Adecopa Lopez that last time by. We're not seeing any signs that Lopez is too low on fuel. Victor Lobato Lopez, having a look at him right now, he is dropping back though. He's dropped back dramatically and he, he's lifting and coasting. Victor Lobato Lopez is very short on fuel here. Um, he's going to lose P number five. He's going to lose that top five because here comes Andrew Bacorio right behind him now. Bacore is through, and Victor Lobato Lopez, I think, has timed it a little bit too short here. 17 second pit stop for Victor Lobato. So, if that's anything to go by, Adecopa Lopez must be on fumes right now. Well, we're seeing he's dropping back a little bit here from Brian Dell. And actually, interestingly, he pulls out of the toe. So that's that's just proving he doesn't want to close up too much. He's got Fabian Menetre just behind him, who could be a factor here. Doesn't want to quite get involved. All of a sudden, there is a worry right now for Vodafone Giants and Ade Koba. Can he make it to the line in time? The white flag will come out this time by Will, but I'm not sure. He will stay out and try and complete this one, but... But now he's got to hope that he's got four kilometers worth of fuel left. Well, here we are then, white flag, one more lap to go. But he's allowing drivers to go past here. This is really like an Indy 500. He's got eight seconds. He can go slower here. The white flag is out for Copa Lopez, lifting coast all the way down the hill right now. The driver ahead of him going wide down at turn number two is not going to help him at all. But for Copa Lopez right now, what he's got to do is lift and coast as much as he can. Battle going on between Leibert and Gindy. We'll keep an eye on that one. Leibert is winning that battle right now. Vinicius Rocha looks fine on fuel. Copa Lopez going to lift and coast it again, almost surely into Moss. Doing exactly that. Into five. And into six he will go. We're going to stay on board of Copa Lopez because if he can pull this one off, this will be fantastic for him. That Vodafone Giants team making their debut in the 2K World Cup. And what a way to kick off season number 12 on a 140th broadcast event of the 2K World Cup here on Race What TV and iRacing Live. You've really got to get to the end of this straight at the very least. Try and coast it if you can through eight and nine. I just heard the fuel go potentially for the first time the white flag is out two corners left to go right now Victor Labato Lopez has got issues Johnny Gindy is past Leap Le Burr we'll come to that one in a moment Ale Copa Lopez final corner he's done it he will win here at most sport Canadian tires motorsports park Copa Lopez does it in one stop, Philippe Leibur, Johnny Gindy, going to replay this one for you now. Leibur holds on to third place over Gindy at the end. Vinicius Rocha will take home 
second place and this is what went down with Johnny Dindy. You can just see Felipe Burr, final corner, final lap, just sneaking himself then past Johnny Dindy. Oh my word, what a race we have just had here today. The safety car always creates some interesting situations. We thought it will be Vinicius Rocha who might be pushing the margin, Jake, but it's Adecopa Lopez then and the 301 machine who are your winners here at the Canadian Tires Motorsports Park. And there's a reason, Will, why I so badly want to see safety cars in the iRacing World Championship Grand Prix Series and at the top level of iRacing Championships because they change everything. Without that safety car, Ade Koba's not making that on a one-stop. He's making it on a two-stop strategy. So that would put him all the way back down through the order. He lost three seconds almost on that final lap to Vinicius Rocha. Two seconds, actually, the gap that he lost. But that won't matter. He takes the victory for Vodafone Giants. Giants gave and get their big victory in the 2k world cup and there's more to come from that team they bear did well to get past gindy but it was gindy's mistake in the end will as he got sideways slightly through eight yep and there is ali copa lopez pretty much in fumes right now i don't believe the bump drafting rule applies after the drivers come to the end so maybe he'll get a little bump back towards pit road here though for your final race results It's Adeko Lopez Jr. who does a 17 lap stint to hold on and claim victory in round number one of the 12th season of the 2K World Cup here at the Canadian Tires Motorsports Park. He wins by 5.8 seconds over Vinicius Rocha, who did a short fuel at the end, and we thought it might have been him running out of fuel. We never realized that Adeko Lopez Jr. Hey, Adekopa Lopez even will be the one staying out all the way to the end. Philippe Leibert, third place, only Gindy in fourth. Andrew Bacorio running out your top five. Fahim Atanides in P number six with Victor Labato Lopez in seventh. Brian Lockwood in eighth. Edwin Valerino in ninth. And Enzo Cantor rounds out your top ten. Just to let you know, Adekopa Lopez ran out on the Mario Andretti straightaway. Could not make it all the way home. So couldn't quite get the chance to uh, not quite do donuts, but go back to the start finish line. P number 11, Justin Tipton. P number 12, Borges Zazo. Tran Tran in 13th. Devin Singh, 14th. Simon Edwards rounds out your 15th drivers. Kovic Pai, Mikel Danavel, and Yao Oliveira, and Jonathan Drugster, and Andrea Almon are your top 20 rest results up on your screen. Get this of 30 drivers finished on the lead lap here today. A total, I'm just gonna have a look through here, a total of I believe 32 drivers, indeed 32 drivers did finish on the lead lap. Had ourselves six drivers scored, one lap down, John Tully scored two laps down, and then you were Tyrese cycling through for you now. Let me take a breath after that one. We'll be back with post-race interviews after these messages. You're watching the 2K World Cup presented by DES Simulation here on Racebot TV and on iRacing Live.
Welcome back then to post-race coverage from the 2K World Cup presented by DES Simulation. And it was a fun one. It was a crazy one at the end. Holding on to take victory was Ade Copa Lopez by 5.8 seconds over Vinicius Rocha, Philippe Leiber, third. Trying to get into fourth. And Correa running out your top five, Philippe Leiber. I bet you didn't believe that Ade Copa Lopez could do a 17 lap stint. No, I was shocked. <laughs> like, I couldn't believe it because he was staying out and I thought, well, that's impossible because you can only do 15 laps on a tank. And he uh, he did 18 laps or 19 even. I, it was just incredible. Hats off to him for for pulling that one off. Started the race on pole position, led through the safety car period. That safety car period affect you at all in terms of your approach to the event? No, not really. Um, it just uh, made it a lot like made me settle down a little bit at the start of the race, and then try to stay out of trouble. And I decided to pit early because uh, I didn't want to get into fights with uh, with the cars behind me because I saw Johnny coming. <laughs> He's pretty quick, so I, I just wanted to play it safe. And um, it almost worked until Johnny and Vinny uh, came out together and started working together to to put in better lap times than me and when I saw that I knew I knew I had no chance of winning but in the end it's I'm pretty happy uh, I led a quite a few laps to have some bonus points and I had the pole position so I'm I'm happy well the 140 races now scored complete in 2k world cup history the finish of this one how does it rank in terms of the I don't believe this is happening approach Oh, you mean the the fuel saving by yeah. a day? Yeah. That's just, uh, yeah. well, I have no words for it because it's, it seems impossible. He did something that was impossible. So it's way up there with uh, the craziest uh, results uh, ever in the 2K Cup. I think it sits probably alongside that famous Watkins Glen last lap finish. But next time out, the mid-Ohio sports car course. Now, this is a track that we don't normally go to in 2k world cup it's one that i like part of the track but the rest of it it's gonna be a very technical track i mean there's a lot of off camber corners um you got the china uh, china bends even you got yourself that kind of mickey mouse section in the middle part of the racetrack but you have got a very interesting run down to the keyhole but i'll ask you a question um, in the Verizon IndyCar series, of course, they start the race down at turn number three because turn number one gets too tight. Have you considered doing that for the Mid Ohio Sports Car event? No, our our cars are pretty narrow. They're like pencils, so we'll we'll fit four cars in into turn one easily. So no, that's not on the table. I'll tell you one thing, Jake. If they're gonna um, now have a crash at turn number one, I'm just saying now. I said it first. I told you so. Um, but Philippe, before we let you go, anyone you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, thanks for uh, to DS Simulation for sponsoring this season again. And uh, again, congrats to Ade for an amazing strategy. Well, thank you. And by the way, round number 12, centripetal circuit. No, no, no. <laughs> That's because uh, it, it uh, well, the, the schedule shows Centripetal, but uh, it's because it's a random track. So Can we not just have a time trial. They've got to like go from lane number one, then a lap on lane number two, then lane number three, then lane number four. I don't even know how to do laps around that. Ah, just be like an Asgard driver. Turn left. I can't say that too loud. Oh, it just turns circles around that center point. Yeah, is that yeah. it? That's been watching. Oh. Philippe Leiber there coming home in third place. And again, Jake, I am saying now, if there is a crash at turn number one at mid Ohio Sports Car Course, I told you so. Well, you will tell us so. And we have seen a fantastic race overall, Will. You know, you do put it up with that Watkins Glen race, which was two, no, three wide, two deep, heading up the S's section, which was absolutely fantastic to see. But of course, Will, you know... This brings the best of the best. And what I will say is, yes, we've had fantastic turnout. Yes, we've had a fantastic race. But I think the 2K World Cup needs to try and keep this level, keep this turnout as well. I don't want to see a 2K World Cup at the finale, which has only 25 drivers finishing. Yeah, indeed. So we have, though, got Johnny Gindy in fourth place. Goodbye with you, Jay, from ERT. 
Yes, I have Mr. Two Shoes himself, Johnny Gindy. Johnny, um, uh, what a difficult race that turned out to be. He started fifth. The opening pack looked to be very, very dangerous. A lot of drivers wanting to move their way up and forward. How do you keep your head in a pack racing mentality on a road course like this? Yeah, it was definitely a bit crazy. The, the draft is just so insane. You have to pretty much half of the straight you're not even at 60 percent throttle if you're in a big bag like that one at the start but uh at the start i was just focusing i mean particularly after the after the uh, safety car i i don't know i figured maybe it was a big big long shot but maybe it was possible to go on a single stop i soon realized that was impossible and i have no idea how that i uh managed to do it so so that first part of the first that after the safety car i was just saving as much fuel as i could so i wasn't trying to get as far forward as possible I only at the end of the stint before going into the pits i try to move up a little bit just so i i'd, let, I'd lose a little bit less time uh, going into the pits after that i got pretty lucky finding Vinny, uh so so we could draft each other go a little bit quicker and also save a little bit of fuel uh, obviously, he ended up saving quite a bit more than I did. I also ended up uh, overfueling by about four laps in the end because my uh, uh, my set went in and where I go. I, w I was just doing the math in my head and, and driving at the same time. So I over uh, overestimated how much fuel I needed and uh, I lost a bit of time. But still, it was, it was pretty fun at the end fighting uh, with Philippe. Just got a little bit unlucky with the lapped car that gave him the draft. Otherwise, maybe I could have had a bit more of an overlap on the outside and, and made the pass uh, stick a little bit better. Well, uh, let's talk about that middle part of the stint then, because you're on your own, you're with Vinnie Rocha, you're working together. How difficult is it to work together with um, someone from a different team who you know uh, has that potential to uh, be working for someone else, for example, like Philippe maybe, or is out there looking to get his own event working in his own process? Yeah, no, you, you can definitely tell he's looking, driving for, for himself. Especially, it's the first race of the season. It's not like anyone has more of a chance over anyone else in any given team. So pretty much everyone's just trying to do the best job. Not crashing into their teammates, but at the same time, uh, raising pretty hard and, and getting every single advantage they can get. So I knew Vinny would, would uh, uh, work along, and he did. So I was pretty happy with that. By that logic, I'm going to be the champion next season. So, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're heading... Come? I don't get that logic. Well, well, you said that everybody has a fair chance of winning, right? So I'm going to be the champion. All oh, right. Yeah. Um, well, so, so coming up that. next, then, two weeks' time, Mid-Ohio. Uh, very similar in terms of uh, in terms of layout to Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. Maybe uh, a bit slower on the second half of the lap. Do you feel that most sport was a good eye-opener for you into the season knowing that mid ohio holds some very very similar characteristics yeah i mean yeah i, I guess now that i never thought about it but now that you mentioned it mid ohio is very similar just a little it's like a slower version of this track really where you don't really only have one or two hard braking zones and then everything else you're brushing the brakes or or braking as you're turning so it's very similar in that aspect uh, I mean, this this week was a pretty encouraging for me because this is traditionally my one of my worst tracks, if not the worst track. Uh, and at the start of the week, I was about three tenths fast uh, slower than I am now. So I found a, a bunch of time uh, throughout the week just doing a bunch of practice. So that was pretty encouraging. And if this is my worst track, uh, it, it should be pretty good for the rest of the season then. Well, he's found the track that he wants to have a run at, and he's found some very good time as well. Johnny Gindy coming home in fourth position. A good, solid start, Will, for today's proceedings and for the rest of the season in this championship. Indeed, so we've also got Brian Lockwood here as well. Moving the microphone nicely in position. Brian Lockwood. I oh, know that's Johnny. Johnny, move the microphone away now. You're dumb. Uh, Brian Lockwood, number one machine. Champion um, coming into the season. Defending champion. Qualifying wasn't that great. What went wrong? Brian! Brian! Sorry about that. There we are. Um, I wasn't sure what went wrong in qualifying. I just didn't have any speed. But uh, Andrew me in Discord that it looked like my car had pretty major wing damage. So that must be the reason that I didn't have any pace. 
Um, so the rest of the race was just a recovery, you know. Not how I wanted to start season, for sure, as the defending champion. But I think I showed some pace. Uh, I, I, I think I'll be able to do good things in the next few races. Yeah, of course. Um, the race itself, you are right there seeing the incident unfold into turn number three. How hard was it to navigate? Yeah, I I got incredibly lucky. Um, I had to dodge several cars going through. Uh, one car came across the track right in front of me. I almost stopped on the track, but uh, managed to get away with, with no damage, really. So... After the safety car, I was up to 23rd, and from there, matter of getting those laps. Well, um, not the best opening to your title defense. However, you do get a top 10. Mid Ohio Sports Car Cars, uh, blah, Mid Ohio Sports Car Course up next in the championship. Looking to fare any better there? Well, we'll see. I don't have much experience there. I think the last time I drove on that track in a skippy was maybe three years ago. So. Hopefully we'll do well. Um, I mean, I, I think I'm pretty confident going in. Uh, I, I think I'll be able to fight for the win there. Well, thank you very much there. Brian Lockwood, Jake, final thoughts? Well, a fantastic race, as we always tend to see in the 2K World Cup. But this one, uh, for a lot of different reasons, we had the great fighting at the front in the beginning. We then had ourselves the sort of played out, will they, won't they, in the middle. And then the end became a good old fuel save. And as much as people want to see those battles, five, six, ten wide coming to the line, a good old fuel save race sometimes becomes a big, big challenge. And Lexington, Ohio, in two weeks' time, will be where our destination next takes us. O-H-I-O. Don't forget, tomorrow night we have got ourselves Monday Night Skippies. If you enjoy the Canadian Tires Motorsports Park, you can see it all over again. Club UK and Ireland Monday Night Skippies in support of the Calm Zone tomorrow here, 8 p.m. GMT, live on Racebot TV. We'll be back in a fortnight's time as we head ourselves over to Ohio. Who knows? We might still have LeBron James being a part of the sports team over there, he might be gone. No one knows, and to be honest, I don't really care. But for the time being, that is all we got time for. Before we go, I want to give a shout out, of course, to the people that make it happen for us here on Racebot TV. It's one Balau, trackcams22.com. Andres Warner and Ander One Design for our overlay design development and ATVO by Simon Grossman and AppEngineering.com. And Nick Thurston, as ever, for Racebot TV, live timing and scoring. That guy over there has been Jake Sperry. I'm Wolf Vincent. Good night from the Canadian Tires Motorsports Park. <laughs>